part with this third lecture. Thank you. So since uh, this is the last day and I'm the last speaker from outside of Princeton, I would very much like to thank the hospitality of the Institute for Advanced Study, the leadership of Chiara, but also the staff member of IAS, uh, accommodating 300 students plus some uh, noisy lecturers, and uh, uh, Michelle Sage, uh, Lisa, Susan, and many staffs, and the technical staff back there. Uh, last night at the dinner, I overheard people in the kitchen saying, last day. <laughs> <laughs> so I really appreciate uh, their effort uh, in accommodating us. So that means that you students uh, should really take this uh, uh, advantage of this uh, opportunity. So attending lectures, asking questions to speakers, but also getting to know each other because friendships that are made on occasion like that will be very precious. So thank you for all of coming. So I'd like to uh, start talking about D-brains in the context of uh, topological strings. So uh, based, uh, roughly based on my work uh, with uh, uh, Yaron Oz and uh, uh, Jen In, 960611. Uh, so there are two types of boundary conditions. Remember, the in the case of A model, uh, BRST charge are given by these operators, so if you have D-brain with boundary condition, you want to set up the boundary condition that preserves this BRST symmetry. So on the boundary, you want to impose the condition that G, G plus is either plus or minus G bar plus. You also want to, to preserve the uh, U1 charge, so that means that J has to be equal to J bar. In the case of B model, BRST operators are generated by G plus and G bar minus in my notation. So that means that the G plus has to be equal to either plus or minus G bar minus. Since the charge sign is flipped between left and right, so the identification should be J is equal to minus J bar. So, well, so far, we ha yesterday we were talking about a case when the dimension of the target space <laughs> is three because of uh, some special feature of charge uh, uh, fermion number violation, but let me get back to the general N for now. So if you consider the simplest case, so the analysis of this type of D-brain has been done and uh, uh, very much in the last decade or so, and lots of known. Let me just talk about a very, very simple case where the gauge field on the brain is turned off, and you, you just have a, a, a metric background, and in the limit, of semi-classical approximation, the leading order in alpha prime, if you solve this equation in the case of A model, so I call that as A brain, uh, if you have uh, 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 A brain wrapping on some cycle in Calabial space, remember you impose a condition that uh, this boundary condition is taking place on a sub-manifold of the Calabial manifold, then what you can show is that these conditions implies that uh, the Kera form <coughs> restricted on this submanifold has to vanish. Now, Kera form is non-degenerate two form on the Calabria manifold. So, so you may think of this also as a symplectic form just like in your phase space of dynamical system. So the submanifold where a symplectic form vanishes is called Lagrangian. Uh, you, you should be familiar with the Hamiltonian formulation of classical mechanics where a dynamical system is described by even dimensional motion in even dimensional manifold. Half of that is a coordinate and half of that is momentum. And if you restrict your space to the space of, say, coordinate, then symplectic form degenerate, and that's submanifold called Lagrangian. So the manifold, submanifold which supports A brain has to be Lagrangian. So in particular, the dimension of this submanifold, the real dimension of this submanifold, has to be half of the real dimension of the total space, which is N. So Calabial threefold, the Lagrangian submanifold has to be three real dimensional. Okay. In the case of, for B brain, for B 
for B brain, uh, you can do the similar analysis and find that gamma has to be holomorphic submanifold in M. So you can derive that from semi-classical analysis of these conditions which was explained in this paper. Okay, in addition, so these are the conditions for topological BRC symmetry on the wall sheet being preserved by the D-brain boundary condition. If we, in addition, want space-time supersymmetry in, with, 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 with uh, uh, application of this type of topological strings to superstring in mind, just like Edward Witten talked about yesterday and I will try to talk about later today, then you may want these d brain to preserve also half of the space-time supersymmetry. Now, to describe space-time supersymmetry, uh, what you're going to do is to bosonize this U1 current. where this phi and phi has this two-point function. So that uh, J and J has uh, this operator product expansion. So if you bosonize in it in this way, then the space-time SUSY generator contains a part which is like square root of n over 2, excuse me, i over square root of n over 2 times phi. So in the NSR formalism, you have a Ramon-Ramon vertex operator for space-time supersymmetry, and uh, it contains this type of factor. So, space-time supersymmetries are generated by these, and for the uh, right mover, these are generated by these. Okay? So, that means that, for example, in the case of A brain, you would like the condition, if, we, if the A brain to, in order for A brain to satisfy half of space-time supersymmetry, you would like the condition that uh, this is satisfied for the left move between the left mover and the right mover in order for, for this uh, half of the supersymmetry to be preserved. From the geometric point of view, this is actually equal to holomorphic N forms contracted with psi. And this is uh, its complex conjugation. So therefore, this condition means that the uh, holomorphic N form restricted to gamma, remember gamma is N-dimensional submanifold, the real N-dimensional submanifold, omega is N form, so you, you can restrict that to uh, gamma, has to be equal to omega bar of gamma, because that's this condition, okay? But then I remember that uh, on the uh, Carabia manifold, you have to have a condition that determinant of the metric is a product of omega and omega bar. This is, a con this is actually equivalent to the condition that rich uh, curvature of the manifold vanishes. So that means that this condition means that omega is actually volume form on gamma. So the Lagrange submanifold which satisfies this condition is called special Lagrangian. So the condition that A brain satisfies that preserves half of the topological BRST symmetry is satisfied if gamma is Lagrangian, but if you in addition your submanifold, if you want your submanifold to satisfy half of space-time supersymmetry you need this additional special condition, and this, these, these are called special Lagrangian. Okay? And there is a corresponding condition for B-brain. Now, wonderful aspect 
of open string, which is described by string ending on uh, uh, D-brains, is that there is a field theory formulation to it. So uh, there is a very nice paper by Witten about the string field theory of this type in general in nuclear physics B26819 86. I'm not sure whether you were born when this paper was written, but <laughs> uh, so there is a field theory formulation in the sense that you can actually write down Lagrangian and then just do the Feynman diagram as you would in any field theory, and then that would compute the loop amplitude of this topological field theory. Uh, Symbolically, the, you have a Lagrangian, which very much looks like a Chan Simon Lagrangian, where phi is an open string field uh, described by open string Hilbert space, and then, then you have a three point function described by what is called Witten vertex. So, uh, so then you can apply that for the A model and B model, namely open string on A brain and B brain. And uh, in B model in particular, since we know that uh, the Kera moduli of the B model is BRC trivial, so that means that you can take the volume of the Carabial as large as you like, which means that alpha prime correction is uh, exact, and uh, which in particular means that uh, the, the string field theory reduces to ordinary field theory with local degrees of freedom. So B model open string is actually local field theory, typically. In the case of A model, it can be in general stringy. However, in exceptional situation where there are no compact two cycle, if, if M has no compact two cycle, Then again, it reduces to ordinary field theory. So we'll discuss uh, some of those situations now. So let's consider, say, A model on cotangent space of uh, some ma three dimensional manifold. So let me get back to the case when the complex dimension of the Carabiao is three. So let's consider A model on cotangent space of some manifold M where dimension, real dimension of M is three, okay? So obviously, well, this, is, this, is a, this must be the case that you are familiar with in dynamical system. If you have a dynamical system for the motion of the manifold M, the phase space would be cotangent space of M, where the cotangent direction is a momentum. So clearly, M is then Lagrangian. So if you have M, and if you have a cotangent space to it, then D brain wrapping on M should be A brain. So you can have N, D brain on M, and then this gives rise to UN Chan Simon theory uh, on M. If you apply Witten's procedure to write down open string field theory for this D brain, and then, but however, I, we notice that there is actually no non trivial holomorphic maps from two-dimensional surface with boundaries ending on this M, you can, uh, then you can show that, uh, the, uh, th then from that kind of argument, you can show that this reduced to ordinary field theory. In this case, it's in Chan Simon field theory. So this was also shown by Witten in his quite beautiful paper, 9207094. Okay, so, so you have uh, action for Chan Simon theory with level K, ADA, 
plus the two thirds of a cube. Okay, so I have to tell you that uh, here the string coupling constant, which I'm going to denote by lambda, is given by two pi i over k plus n. So string coupling constant is pure imaginary. Okay, so then uh, also uh, one should be able to uh, expand. So in this case, so so what open string amplitude look like? where open string amplitude look like f of g and n, where you have a genus of the Riemann surface and n is a number of boundaries. Okay, so you have a Riemann surface with g handles and uh, n boundaries, which is denoted by f g of n. And then you can sum f g and n by lambda of 2g minus 2. And then you have to have some kind of loop counting parameter, which I denote by t. And then you sum over g and n. And uh, according to the correspondence between the open string field theory and the string theory computation, it should be equal to the Chan Simon partition function with k and uh, 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 un. Uh, for this three-dimensional manifold, where lambda is given by this formula, and t is uh, two-fifth coupling, which is uh, two pi i n k plus n. So far, this has nothing to do with large n duality. This is just a reorganization of the open string amplitude in the field theory language. Uh, by studying this, uh, uh, Kumran Buff and I thought that it would be nice to understand also not the invariant of Jones polynomial and its generalization by Humphrey. And in fact, one can generalize this type of construction to compute not the invariant. And uh, to do that, what do you have to do? So this is my paper with Kumran Buffer in 9912123. One, one, uh, what you have to do is the following. So suppose you have a manifold, M, and suppose you have some kind of knot on it. Knot is just a, a mapping map of S1 onto the submanifold. Now how do you compute the knot invariant using the Chan Simon theory? So we thought. And so so I remember there are N brains, N D brain wrapping on the submanifold M. So what we figured out is that uh, you can do the following thing. You can consider some manifold which is ending on M with this circle, but is extended in two more dimensions. Okay, so, so this is defined as follows. Suppose this loop is described by some kind of path. So X is a coordinate on M, and T is some one-dimensional parameter which parameterizes this circle, okay? So then I consider the following submanifold C. So th let's call that as L. Then I consider C of L to be defined as uh, this path, but with conjugate momentum direction. Momentum direction is this cotangent direction, which is normal to the velocity of this vector. Okay. So for each. Uh, 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 if you have uh, this trajectory like that, this is a three-dimensional vector. So if this gives you one condition for three-dimensional vector P, so there are two solutions. So it's extended in two directions in P. So this is P, and uh, this is X. So this gives you a three-dimensional submanifold. This is also Lagrangian. This is also Lagrangian. So you can put D-brain on it. So you put N prime D-brain on it. Okay. Oh, by the way, so this is called the co-normal bundle. For each uh, loop on this submanifold, you can define co-normal bundle on it. And uh, CL has a topology of uh, R2 times S1, because it's extended in two uh, dimensions, 
and there is a circular direction to it. So in particular, there is a holonomy associated to it. If you have n prime d brain on it, you can consider holonomy around this S1. So this is an element of u n prime. So what Cameron Buffer and I showed was that if you have such a setup, and if you consider partition function with this holonomy, then the partition function or partition free energy according to the notation terminology yesterday would be GH of summation of uh, number of winding. So you can have say for example uh, 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 H boundaries, so, so maybe I should have be consistent and these are called H in, in my next note. Uh, suppose you have H boundaries uh, for this open string, then the, the, that boundary can wrap this holonomy several times. So suppose you have H boundary, each boundary can wrap the holonomy direction in various, direct, uh, various times. So that means that you can define open string amplitude with different number winding for each of these boundaries. So you can consider the following, you can consider doing the following thing. Uh, this times uh, trace of V to the D1. I assume V is in the fundamental representation and then trace of V to the DH. So you can consider following this type of part, uh, partition free energy and you can exponentiate it to make it into the partition function. And then we showed, uh, Cameron Buffer and showed that this is actually equal to expectation value of generating function of Wilson loop uh, in the original Chan Simon theory. So this is, uh, this is for the original Chan Simon theory. And then this is for the probe holonomy. evaluated in the Chan Simon theory. So you do the Chan Simon partition function for this UN Chan Simon theory and use this V as some kind of probe to it. So this will give you a generating function. So this is generating function of Wilson loop. This is going to be a useful formula which uh, I will use uh, later in this today's lecture. But before we get there, uh, let me discuss the large N duality for this type of theory. So large N duality, as you all know, is a relation between open strings and closed strings. So, so you can have open string which is typically related to gauge theory, to closed string, which is typically related to gravity theory. So ADS CFT correspondence is an example, but we can actually uh, have open string, a topological string version of large and duality, which we can actually discuss in much more detail uh, the string theory aspect of it. So, as an example that I showed over there, typically if you have open string, the amplitude depends on genus, but also number of handles, and that can depend, that can come in various type of boundary condition. So you can actually consider the following thing. So suppose, for example, you can have uh, open string, you can have D-brains, but suppose you have different kind of D-brains. You can have uh, uh, D brain, uh, N D brain wrapping on some cycle, M D brain wrapping on another cycle, so you can have different kind of things. So you can have different type of boundary condition. You can say that N one of the boundary end on uh, D brain of first type, N two of them ends on boundary of second type, and et cetera. So the total number of boundary would be some of these. Okay, so now I'm going to define the following thing. F G of T, 
where t is some parameter, which I'm going to identify as a two-foot parameter later, is equal to sum of these boundaries. And I introduce to first parameter loop counting, a boundary counting parameter for each one of these uh, uh, boundary types. Okay? So this is a definition of uh, partition free energy. Now comes the conjecture. Uh, according to head to foot. Uh, the following is a conjecture, namely that whenever you have something like that, then there is a family of uh, target space. Such that Fg of t is a closed string amplitude or partition free energy on this manifold. So this would be a, a formulation of large and duality. And uh, so there are examples. So let's take an example from the A model associated to Chan Simon theory that I just talked about. So in that case, uh, Fg of n would be open topological string on T star, say, of three sphere. So let's take m up there to be three sphere. So then, without using a uh, 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 large n duality, that should be related to Chan Simon theory on S3. So this, is, this, has, this statement has nothing to do with large n duality, just a formulation of uh, uh, open string perturbation theory in terms of string field theory. But now comes the uh, large n duality statement, namely that if you consider Chan Simon partition function on S3 for level k and n, so I remind you that level k and n are related to open string coupling constant and the two-foot parameter like this, then the partition function is given by e to the i pi over 8 n, n minus 1. I'm just uh, writing this so that there is actually a formula known. Okay? And uh, according to large end duality, if this is dual to some uh, closed string theory, well, uh, first of all, excuse me, just by using, just by using the reformulation of Chan Simon theory of op as open topological string theory, one should be able to write, reorganize this in terms of the partition function. So I want to remind you this statement has nothing to do with large and duality, just a, a re expression of uh, uh, Chan Simon theory partition function. But now you can ask, what is this thing? Does this string, does this thing has uh, interpretation, has uh, as a, a closed string amplitude? So this question was first asked by uh, Vipul Perry War, but uh, was put into a more sort of convincing fashion by Gopak Gopakuma. And Bafa in the beautiful paper uh, 9811131. So they show that actually you can, re you can sum over n and uh, you can write it in this fashion. This chi of g is minus 1 to the g minus 1 
the Bernoulli number divided by some uh, polynomial of G. And this turned out to be just Euler characteristic of the moduli space of G nash G Riemann surface. And uh, this is the Chan class of uh, the Hodge bundle over that moduli space uh, whose formula is also known. And uh, the relation between these and uh, the, the explicit formula was actually conjectured by Gopakuma and Buffer based on the large end duality argument and uh, proven by Faber and the Panda Haripanda mathematically. This turned out to be the closed string amplitude on resolved conifold that we talked about yesterday. So this is a very clear demonstration of this conjecture. We are summing over the number of boundaries for open string by the truth coupling actually turns the closed string open string amplitude into closed string amplitude where T is now parameter of the target space geometry. In this case, the Kähler moduli of the conifold. Now, large, this large end duality also holds for uh, open string. Uh, with, uh, with, with, uh, with the additional d -brain. So, So here I explained, here I explained that you can actually, so this, we were, here we were using the uh, Chan-Simon theory formulation of open string field theory, where open string amplitude is uh, expressed as Chan-Simon partition function. But you can also insert d -brain, additional d -brain on cone normal bundle associated to not and then you can compute the not invariant in this way too. So we can, we can actually add uh, this d brain on co-normal co bundle on both sides of the large end duality, and these additional d brain probes goes with the line of the large end duality, namely, Namely, that uh, you, so let me first draw the kind of caricature of a uh, 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 cotangent space of S3. So this is S3 direction, and I put uh, N D brain on it. And in a cotangent space direction, so you have S3 to it, and then there is a S2 which shrinks to a point. So this is a caricature of cotangent space of T3 that I drew yesterday. And the conifold side is uh, of this type without brains. So this is the resolved conifold. where the two-foot coupling, which is the size of this S2, is related to this two-foot coupling. Okay, so now we can add D brain to it. The, oh, so you, you, you pick any knot over here, so I have a knot here, and then on the, with the knot, I have a core normal bundle, and I put N prime, prime D brain on it. Then you do the large end duality, so then what happens is that there are actually corresponding brains on this side. So then you can show that the uh, not invariant can also be expressed as a partition function on resolved conifold with additional probe D brain. Okay? So this was also discussed in my paper with Comran Buffer that I did, uh, I, I cited over there. And uh, this gives rise to a new expression for uh, not invariant. And uh, I'm gonna tell you later that this also has some interesting uh, consequence to the idea of mirror symmetry. But I will come to that later. All these uh, discussions leads to a very powerful way to compute topological string partition function on toric Carabiao called the topological vertex method. 
which I would like to discuss now. So this large duality between closed topological string and Chan Simon theory allows us to compute Fg, the topological passion function, to all order in genus for toric Carabial. Now, yesterday, I presented the toric Carabial manifold. I defined them as T2, T3 vibration. And then I drew some diagrams uh, to describe the toric Carabial as three-dimensional diagram. But alternatively, you can also describe that as T2 times R vibration by dividing the space in different way. And you also have a toric diagram associated to it. So basically, it's the same kind of toric diagram, but just projecting that three-dimensional toric diagram to an appropriate two-dimensional plane. So basically, you can use the same picture. But it is more convenient for the purpose of uh, uh, topological vertex and other applications. So let's look at the conifold. So if you have resolved the conifold, so that was my homework assignment yesterday, so I hope everybody has done it. So the toric carabial, toric description for the conifold has discharge assignment. So from that, you can deduce the toric diagram should be of this type. Okay, so I remind you that uh, at each of these uh, edges, one of the two cycles vanishes. So one of the two cycles vanishes, and this angle of this edge correspond tells you which two cycles vanishes. So, so one cycle vanishes, the other cycle vanishes, in this direction, combination of them vanishes. On this corner, two of them vanishes simultaneously. So that means that on this corner, you have one cycle vanishes, but the other cycle is finite. On this corner, both vanishes, so that means that you have a small cycle, zero cycle, blows up, and then shrink to a point again. So that means that there is actually a S2 over here. And uh, the radius of S2 is related to T. And that is this S2 over here. Okay? So this is uh, uh, the large and uh, clustering dual side, the co resolved the conifold. Now, if you have this kind of geometry parameterized by T, you can move T around and do various kind of things. So, for example, you start with this uh, 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 resolved conifold diagram, and you have T here. And then suppose you shrink T to be zero. Then these coincide, and then, then, then you have this kind of diagram. Now, you can consider stretching into the other direction, you can resolve. So this, uh, this is a singular geometry where S2 shrink to a point. But you can try to resolve it in opposite direction, which actually correspond to T negative. And this is called flop transition. However, once you are here, there is another direction to go. Remember that originally you had the uh, T2 times R vibration over three-dimensional space. I'm just projecting it onto two-dimensional space. So you have actually one more direction of uh, 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 T2 vibration. So you can actually, once you have this kind of configuration, you can actually lift this degenerate fiber, the, 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 the locus, in the third direction. So you can actually move this off like this. And then, 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 the, the, the closest the place where they uh, come, th th these two lines come together is expressed at dotted line. So now let's pause a moment and think about what kind of geometry we are talking about. So we have this three-dimensional geometry, and one cycle is uh, vanishing on this side, and you have another cycle vanishing on this side. Now what kind of geometry do we have along this dotted line? Okay. So, in fact, this turned out to be three sphere. So let me try to convince you that th this is a three sphere. So, our space is R2, but if you add the point at infinity, 
this becomes S3, right? And uh, now let's imagine there is a handle body to it, just like uh, a, a surface, a donut, but inside in it. So suppose you have a, a donut floating over here. There are two cycles on the surface of the donut. But this cycle can be shrink, shrunk to a point. You cannot shrink this point to a, to, you cannot shrink this cycle to a point going inside of the torus, right? So you can cut the donuts into this direction, but not in this direction. But you can actually shrink this cycle to outside of the torus, right? So, so if you have R2 and other point at the infinity, then one of the cycles shrink to a point, the other cycle shrink to infinity. So, 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 that, so this shows that actually the, the geometry of S3 can be described as a T2 vibration where one of the cycles shrink to a point in one direction, the other cycle shrinks to the other direction. So in fact, uh, therefore, there is S3 associated to it. So the ge resulting geometry here is nothing but uh, T star of S3. Okay. So, so this is actually this side of the geometry. So, so we can therefore describe the large end duality in this type of procedure. You draw a toric diagram, and then you have a smooth toric geometry where you have Kera moduli like that. You take the limit where Kera moduli vanishes, and then you, res you deform it in the third direction. Now you have open string wrapping on this extra cycle that emerges in this way. And this is a Lagrangian cycle on which you can uh, draw. So the, 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 the procedure is that uh, you identify the number of Debrain on here as a two hoof coupling for, uh, in, on this side. OK? So now uh, we can apply this procedure locally to compute any topological string amplitude for toric carabia. So let me describe that. So uh, in order to explain that, let me do some examples. And the example I'd like to take first is an example of uh, the local CP2 that I defined yesterday. This is getting complicated. Let's see if I can figure this out. <laughs> this is more difficult than topological string, actually. <laughs> Okay, did I do it right? Okay, so let's, let's apply this procedure for uh, local CP2. So do you remember the toric diagram of local CP2 that we discussed yesterday? Well, for local CP2, the toric diagram is like this. Local CP2, the toric diagram is like this, where you have uh, uh, the base CP2 over here, and there are two fibers. And the, in, uh, uh, the, the slope of these are described in this way. Slope of these edges are described in this way. So I'm just writing the uh, slope in the Cartesian coordinate. Now, how I can use this diagram and apply this type of procedure to relate closed string amplitude here to open string amplitude here. As it is, it seems to be difficult to lift any of these lines. So the trick is to add more lines to it, temporarily. So what you do is that, uh, so here I need colored chalk. I need one more color. 
yeah, here. So, uh, so let's see if I can figure this out. So, so this is a toric diagram of CP3. I'm just adding color to show the, uh, the uh, slope properly. So, so there, are, there was this uh, 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 toric diagram of CP3, uh, the local CP2. So now I add more lines to it. So these yellow lines are parallel to each other, and uh, these blue lines are parallel to each other, and these red lines are parallel to each other. And now I, can, I have now three kera modulis to here. Okay? So this is the uh, extended version of local CP2 geometry. Okay? So now, once you have that, I can do this flop, tra no, no, sorry, this open closed string transition for each of these places. Because now locally this looks like, the, so, so locally this looks like conifold, resolved conifold, this looks like resolved conifold, this looks like resolved conifold. So we can actually lift this like this. We can just shrink these to zero and uh, 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 displace them separately. So there are three S3 connecting them. And then open closed duality means that uh, there are D brains from the, for these cycles where the original T1, T2, T3 are related to the number of D brains in this way by the large end duality for each one of them. Now we can use Chan Simon theory to compute this amplitude. So we have uh, UN1 times UN2 times UN3 Chan Simon theory on each of these S3. But in addition, there are open strings connecting these. Ba this boundary, because we are, will be doing full open string theory on this geometry with this number of D-brain wrapping on it, so nothing prevents us from thinking. So open string with both sides ending on each one of them gives you chan simon theory, but open string stretched between these D-brain give rise to bifundamental field with fundamental representation in UN1 and anti-fundamental representation on UN2, et cetera. So you do the chan simon passion function, now what do you get? We have an answer, which I wrote somewhere here. So this is an answer. So if you probe one chan simon, if you probe, say, from the point of view of this UN1 chan simon theory, by fundamental between this, you can think of this as a probe temporary, and then compute UN1 chan simon passion function first, then, according to my computation with common buffer, you get this answer for U and one Chan Simon theory. Okay? So then in the end, what you get is basically sum of n one n equal one to infinity one over n e to the minus n r, or r is the distance between here times trace of U n, trace of V n, and the expectation value of Chan Simon theory for each one of these factors and you, you with insertion of the bifundamental field over here. So the situation you have is that you have this kind of thing, and then you have open string going between them, like that. So, so this is, uh, okay, so you do this for each one of these. So you has so this is, you, you, here you are taking trace of a fundamental representation, say, of UN1. But you remember that this has, so this is just on this side. But you have the other, you have to remember you have the other side to it. Okay, so you do this for three factors. But then there is an interesting uh, uh, twist to the story, because uh, you have this kind of, 
three Chan, Chan Simon theory on these three sides, and then you have an uh, open string stretched between here. So you have uh, you have open stri string stretched between here and here, and you have open string stretched between here and here. Each one of these is wrapping. So you remember the co normal bundle has a topology of S1 times R2. So these open string endpoints can wrap on each one of these, right? And so you can ask, uh, well, what, what, what's happening on the endpoint? And it turns out that because of the way that this resolution works and deformation works, the endpoint of this closed blue closed open string and the endpoint of red open string are linked, like hop link. So therefore, from the point of this Chan Simon theory, these two are linked. And uh, so the, in the end, you would be computing actually the Chan Simon partition function with uh, this kind of linked uh, open string, which you can compute. And therefore, in the end, uh, the everything can be expressed in terms of link invariant. Namely, that original topological string partition function for local CP2 can now be expressed as uh, some of our representations for Chan Simon theory over here, here, and here with product of uh, link invariance for the hop link. Hop link is a link of this type uh, associated uh, things like this with appropriate factor. And you can do this exercise for any toric carabia. Whenever you have a toric diagram, you can always add and subtract these edges, additional edges, and lift everything, recombine that, and reduce the computation to the uh, computation of Chan Simon gauge theory. So that's a method of topological vertex. Uh, I was uh, hoping that I have time also to discuss. Let's see, I have until 11 o'clock. Is that the schedule? Okay, so I'm barely halfway through what I planned. So let's see, maybe I should just say briefly. So, so this is about uh, open string, topological open string for B model, but there is also a beautiful story about the topological open string. So, so this was a topological open string for A model, but there is also a beautiful story about topological open string uh, for the A model, uh, the B model. So, so I would like to talk about that. But before I get to that, I need to bring this thing down. So, so I told you that uh, in the case of uh, A model, the D brains are Lagrange submanifold. And if you wrap D brain on that Lagrange submanifold, then the resulting theory, open string theory, is a Chan Simon theory on that Lagrange submanifold. And this would give rise to this uh, topological vertex construction that uh, I just discussed. So you can ask what, the, what happens in the case of B model. So in the B case of B model, as uh, we discussed, the uh, required boundary condition dictate that the submanifold in question should be holomorphic submanifold. So there is a good example for holomorphic submanifold. So for example, in the case of resolved conifold, the uh, S2 is an example of holomorphic submanifold. So, so for example, if you have a resolved conifold, by S2 and S3, then you can wrap N D brain now on this S2 side. Previously, we deform, uh, we, 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 put, we put N D brain 
on the deformed co uh, co uh, conifold and gave rise to Chan Simon theory. Now, suppose we put the ND brain on the resolved conifold. And uh, now, uh, this geometry has no complex structure. There is a Kehler moduli here, which is the size of S2. But since we are now talking about uh, uh, a B model, so the Kehler moduli is BRC trivial. So that means that this model has no parameter to it, except for the number of D brain N wrapping on it. So in this case, it was uh, shown by the director of this institute of our digraph and the Cameron buffer uh, in 0206255 that uh, the open string field theory is actually Gaussian matrix model. Which is uh, just integral of UN matrix with Gaussian measure. And you can compute this thing exactly. You can compute this exactly. And find that this is equal to expressed by a generalization of gamma function called uh, uh, Burns double gamma function. Where this is called the Burns function, which, which is characterized by this type of recursion relation. Okay? So, the dependence on string coupling constant is rather trivial like that. Now, as in the case of uh, 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 Chan Simon theory, and in general for open closed string duality, we can expand this thing as the exponential of closed topological string amplitude. And it turns out that this has an expression like this. One can actually identify this as a B model closed string amplitude on deformed conifold. <coughs> with the equation like this. So th we are going backward in this case. So previously, we had uh, deformed the conifold and wrap, put D brain on it, and then took large duality, and we went to the resolved conifold, where the size of the resolution is characterized by two foot coupling. But on the other hand, here we started out with a, 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 a resolved conifold and put B brain on it. Now we went back to the uh, deformed conifold. So, so we go sort of back and forth between them. Okay. So, this type of uh, uh, correspondence uh, is very useful uh, and uh, computationally very powerful. So, I would like to uh, discuss application of this type of idea to mirror symmetry. So, so if you have, so remember that mirror symmetry is a mirror pair of Carabial is a, is a, so if you have a mirror pair of Carabial M and N, then a model on Carabia manifold M is equivalent to B model on its dual Carabia manifold, say W. 
Okay, so suppose you have such a mirror pair. And then, now it's interesting to see what happens if we add d brain to it. Well, we can guess what can happen to d brains Because uh, suppose you have uh, A model on the manifold M. And then suppose you wrap d brain on its Lagrange submanifold. Well, in the case of A model, it has to be Lagrange submanifold. Now, if you go to the, its mirror partner, W, then B brain should be corresponding to the original A brain. B brain can wrap only on holomorphic submanifold. So that means that Lagrange submanifold in A model should get mapped to holomorphic submanifold in its, for its mirror. I will discuss that towards the end of the lecture if I ever get to. I was planning to explain the relation to this kind of computation to four-dimensional supersymmetric gauge theories that uh, Nati was talking about earlier. So if I let me go, then I will discuss that if I get, ever get there. So D brains with mirror symmetry. So if you have uh, A brain on Calabria manifold M, then the mirror should be B brain on its mirror pair W. So this is Lagrangian. So this should be holomorphic. In particular, the zero brain, which is a point, on W should be mirrored to some particular Lagrangian. So you can ask, what is the Lagrangian submanifold which is mirrored to a point of a Calabria manifold? Well, you can actually restrict your choice very severely because what is a modularized space of uh, the D brain which is a point on W? Well, you can move this point around so that means that modularized space of point should be the manifold itself. So that means that in particular, it's complex three-dimensional space. Now you can ask what kind of Lagrangian can have complex three-dimensional space, modularized space. It turns out that it has to be actually T3. You can show that uh, if you have Lagrangian with dimension three uh, modularized space, then it should be T3. Well, if you have T3, you have three cycles, so you can have holonomy of gauge field around each one of them. That gives you three. But it's supersymmetric, so that actually becomes complex variable. So it gives you complex three-dimensional modularized space. And you can prove that that's the only choice. So that means that if you have mirror symmetry, and if you have a point or B brain on one side, then its mirror partner should be family of T3. So you should have a T3 fibration. So this led the, led one, the Strominger, Yao, and Zaslow to conjecture in their beautiful paper in 96-06-040 that any pair of Calabria manifold which are mirror partner to each other, if you have such a setup, then Calabria manifold M, which admit its mirror partner, must, be, must have a family of Lagrangian T3 fibration on it. So that the modularized space of the special Lagrangian three brain with this instance give rise to the mirror W itself. Okay, so now actually, this, the standing of, the, 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 rather than proving this conjecture in generality, let me explain how it works in practice. How you can actually use this to derive mirror partner. Okay, so let's consider uh, our familiar Calabria manifold, which is resolved conifold. Well, in this case, actually, it is non-compact. So it turns out that for if you have non-compact Calabria like that, 
it doesn't admit T3 Lagrange, uh, special Lagrangian vibration. It has to become non-compact. So rather than T3 vibration, you have to have R2 times S1 vibration. Okay, so how can we have R2 times S1 vibration? Well, that's our familiar friend. That would be our co-normal bundle would be an example of uh, R2 times S1 Lagrange submanifold. So let's consider the, that our, fam our friend co-normal bundle. So let's choose, say, unknot, some cy cycle which is uh, not wrapping with each other. And let's consider ND brain on it. Uh, well, so <laughs> actually, I, I went ahead of myself. I'm sorry. So let me go back. So I'm going to use large N duality first. So, so here you have a resolved conifold, but a, a topological string, closed string on the resolved conifold is equivalent to the uh, uh, N A brain on T star of S3. Okay? So, so here you can have a uh, 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 Lagrange 3 manifold associated to not. That's our co normal bundle. So that's co normal bundle to unknot. Okay, so you have a T star of S3, and you can have ND brain. And this is, of course, related to the, uh, the Kera moduli of the resolved conifold by the standard relation. Now, if you have a co-normal bundle like that, then this co-normal bundle goes with a ride for the large end duality, and then you have a resolved conifold like that with uh, S2 over here. And then there is a, there is a map of this co-normal bundle somewhere here. And this gives you the uh, uh, Lagrange sum manifold, which is R2 times S1. According to uh, Strominger Yao Zaslow conjecture, the moduli space of this uh, R2 times S1 vibration, including this disk instant on correction, should give rise to the geometry of the mirror of the resolved conifold. Now, in general, computing the disk instant on and summing over them can be a difficult task. But in this case, it turns out that since this is large and dual, to Chan Simon gauge theory, where you can do exact computation of not invariant. So you can map this program into Chan Simon gauge theory and compute it. And then you can derive that mirror should be equal to the following geometry, where this function f is given by. This where this T is a Kera moduli. This is nothing but the expression that I discussed yesterday, uh, the result of Hori and the buffer, computing the mirror uh, partner of the original resolved conifold by formulating it as a linear sigma model and doing the T duality and uh, 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 vortex instant on computation. So this gives, this gives you alternative derivative. So yesterday I promised you that I'm going to give you, explain the alternative derivation of this mirror, mirror partner. In fact, you can derive that by using uh, strominger yao Zaslow conjecture and computing the disk instant on amplitude for the uh, uh, special Lagrangian R2 times S1 vibration. But you can ask, why did I choose not uh, unknot to describe this uh, 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 special Lagrangian vibration. You, can, you could have chosen other co-normal bundle. You could have, for example, on S2, S3, you could have, for example, uh, trefoil. Like this. And then you can have co-normal co -normal bundle for uh, uh, trefoil. And uh, play the same game again. So this was actually uh, 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 pointed out by Aganagic and uh, Vafa a couple of years ago. 
And they, they should actually show that for each one of these nodes, you, it can give rise to a candidate mirror manifold. For example, for trefoil, again, we can do exact Chan Simon partition function computation and then use the large end duality to compute the disk instant on amplitude according to Strominger Yao Zasro conjecture. It should give rise to the geometry of mirror partner. So, so you, they, they in this way derived more complicated geometry. Well, in view of time, I am not going to write that, but there is a formula for that. And uh, amazingly, both of them actually, it, ha it has been checked that uh, for all uh, mirror carabia associated to different knots, uh, if this, at least for those which can be drawn on torus, they all give rise to the same genus zero partition function. So look like the, uh, in this kind of non-compact carabia manifold, there is not one mirror, but there are infinitely many different mirrors associated to each of these nodes. Okay, so I have told you a variety of techniques that you can use to compute topological string amplitude. And uh, uh, is there any question at this point? Yes. Sorry? Which duality? Large end duality is an exact statement for all n and lambda. Well, I am taking n to infinite limit in a sense that when we actually do comparison, uh, we are expanding things in one over n in the following sense. So for example, let's take this formula. Let's take this formula. So where this is open string amplitude, this is open string side, which I expressed exactly for finite n as a function of n and uh, the uh, 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 open string coupling constant lambda. So let's see, so, so here is the open string coupling constant lambda and then size of n. So you have an exact formula for that. Now, so in large end duality, what you do is you expand this in this way, where t is a two-fifth coupling. Typically, when people say that it's la one of n expansion, what they mean is that uh, lambda is equal to one over n times t. Okay? So, so you can write this asymptotic expansion in string coupling constant as one over n expansion because trivially this is n to the 2g minus 2 times t to the 2g minus 2. So often it is written that f of g is equal to t to the 2g minus 2 times this uh, the curly f of g is this solid f g. So then you can write this thing as a curly f of g divided by 1 over n to the 2g minus 2. So this look like 1 over n asymptotic expansion. If you keep t finite and take large n, it's the same as small string coupling constant. Okay? So in this case, this is an asymptotic expansion in 1 over n. And in that limit, it is verified that each one of these, each one of these expansion terms has a, 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 a topological string interpretation for closed string. So if I draw this, write this in curly notation, then this disappears and there, there, there will be one, and then this actually cancels out. So you might argue that this expansion makes more sense, right? Because uh, now this is a pure number if you do that. And uh, you may say that, well, this makes more sense because actually the dependence on the coupling constant was actually initially trivial, right? All other term depends only on n. And so in, indeed, I mean, this all higher genus amplitude is just number, and which is an expansion of this thing, okay? And only, only coupling constant dependence is here, genus zero and genus one. So you might argue that this curly F makes more sense 
in that sense. And if you do that, it can turn into one over n expansion. Does that make sense? Okay. Any other question? Yes? Well, I should have a comment on that then. Yes, please. Uh, so I think that the basic duality between the resolved chronicles of plus and the informed chronicles of Libre yes. is supposed to be true for every n from one except zero. Yes. From one to infinity. But when you introduce a knot and use the duality to tell you not, I believe you're calling the knot to be the two-membered transition. And that, I think, is believed to be only a Mm -hmm. For sufficiently large n. Yes. The, the reason is that the knot is being treated as a spectator. So what's not being fundamental and certainly is confirmed is being treated as a spectator in the duality, and you're using the same duality you have without the knot. If n is small, probably the knot should influence the duality. Thank you. Yes. In fact, for finite n, there will be some constraint on the, uh, the, the uh, uh, this kind of invariance. For example, here, so in this, in this, in the context of our discussion, for example, we treated all these as if they are totally independent of each other for all n. But for finite n, there will be a relation between them. And uh, I guess that's one of the thing aspects that uh, you are referring to. Namely that here I treat it as if these coefficients are all independent and so. I, 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 I guess there was a more appropriate, appropriate formula somewhere, but I raised them. Yes. Uh, I was tossing out the possibility that for every given knot, this duality is valid for a sufficiently large n. I agree. But I don't know if that's actually the correct thing. Well, what I do not know what happens for finite n with knot. Here I'm explaining how it works without knot. Yes, indeed. Okay, so in the remaining 10 minutes or so, I would like to discuss the uh, application of all of these to uh, type two superstring compactified on Carabia manifold. Okay, so thank, uh, thankfully, uh, uh, Ed Whitting already uh, had some discussion yesterday, so I can borrow some of uh, 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 his uh, uh, talk. So you consider type two A or two B compactified on that carabiao that we have been discussing in the past three days. And this gives rise to theory on R3 with n equal to two supersymmetry. And then you have supergravity multiplet and vector multiplet and hyper multiplet. Supergravity has gravity photon in it, which plays a central role, central role in Edward's talk yesterday. You have a vector multiplet. In the case of type 2A, uh, the, the vector multiplet is associated to Kera moduli. Type 2b, vector multiplet is associated to complex moduli. And in addition, you have a hyper multiplet, uh, which in addition to Caribbean moduli, also contains so-called universal hyper multiplet. Here, I pay attention to vector multiplet. And then you have, you are, those are described by super multiplet field. So you have uh, a chiral super field which start out with the moduli and other field. And then you have uh, 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 gravity multiplet, which start out with the uh, gravity photon field strength. I guess Edward used a notation T yesterday. And then, then you have uh, some higher term, which includes the uh, 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 Riemann curvature. Okay. Now, uh, among the low energy effective theory terms that you'd be interested in, in this compactification are F terms. And F term can be expressed thoroughly by holomorphic integral in the superspace. So you have W square to the 2G times some function, which depends only on T. And you can expand it, and it turns out that this is related to genus G topological string amplitude. So I'd like to roughly explain why something like that can possibly be true. Okay? So remember that when you have topological string, you, you have to do topological twisting. 
So topological twist is equivalent to adding, introducing background gauge field on the string wall sheet and coupling, couple it to the U1 current. A bar J plus A J bar and choose this A to be equal to half of the spin connection. That's the prescription. However, if you have wall sheet gauge field, then the U1 current is no more conserved because uh, there is a chiral anomaly. So in this case, uh, the chiral anomaly is proportional to N times R times square root of G, where N is a complex dimension of the target space. In the case we are interested in, it is three. There are various ways to formulate it. One way is, uh, so I erased it, but uh, I was, at some point, I was bosonizing the U1 current like this. Then if you do that, then this equation becomes del del bar of phi is equal to uh, uh, n times r or something like that. So uh, square root of n probably because there is a square root of n to it. So that means that uh, uh, this a bar times j now becomes one half of a spin connection times del of j and j is that. So this gives rise to the coupling of uh, the scalar field phi to the curvature. Now, namely, the effective action for phi will be del phi, del bar phi, plus additional coupling to the curvature. So this, this, is, this is the effective action for the bosonized uh, U1 current. Now, if you have a genus G Riemann surface, we know that if you integrate the scalar curvature, it should give you Euler characteristic of genus G surface, which is equal to 2 minus 2G in appropriate notation. So that means that, in fact, you can choose the approach. So since we are talking about conformal field theory, so the actual choice of local metric does not matter. So you can choose a metric as you please, uh, provided that complex structure and these topological characteristics are not modified. So in particular, you can write this as uh, sum of delta function. If you write it in sum as sum of delta function, then this term in the action give rise to product of uh, local operators. And the modular integral give rise to basically integral of this insertion point. This is nothing but the contribution of a compactified part to the vertex operator of Ramon Ramon type. Namely, these are Ramon Ramon, part, important component of Ramon Ramon vertex operator. So if you have a string theory uh, in NSR formalism, you have NS sector and Ramon sector. Ramon Ramon sector give rise to, in particular, gravity photon that we are talking about here. So the gravity photon vertex operator has to have this type of component to it. So this naturally shows why topological string amplitude has anything to do with gravity photon scattering amplitude. It requires more work to figure out that it is exactly topological string amplitude. And the state of art is that uh, it requires uh, 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 identities of theta function in some gory detail. I think this is this relation between topological string and gravity photon amplitude is so fundamental. So there ought to be a nice, intuitive, straightforward derivation of the relation between this term here and topological string amplitude. This is true statement. You can derive it, not beautifully, and I hope there will be a beautiful derivation of this statement. Anyway, so if you take this as a, as a fact, then you can do uh, various computations. So for example, F0 of t 
in particular, is a prepotential for n equal to vector multiplet. So, so that means that actually you can use this procedure to solve some low energy dynamics of n equal to supersymmetric gauge theories. So for example, let's take uh, our, our friend local CP2. So, uh, uh, no, no, local C, CP1 times CP1. So it, the toric diagram is of this type. And uh, so this was another exercise, that homework exercise that I, I assigned to you yesterday. So, so this, is, this is the charge distribution. Now if you take this non-compact Calabria manifold, this is non-compact, so that means that uh, the uh, uh, Newton constant is zero in four dimension. So low energy effective theory is a field theory if you take an appropriate limit to it. And in fact, in this case, it is actually n equal to uh, pure SU2 super Young mill theory. Okay? And then you can ask, well, what is the geometry associated to this that captures open string dynamics to it? Well, you can compute the mirror to it. Mirror can be computed exactly using this SYZ duality and mapping it to Chan-Simon theory. And then you can derive that mirror is this, of this type. Because you can, you can, you can, you can transform this into Chan-Simon computation, sum over this instant, this instant on correction exactly, and uh, then identify mirror. And uh, it turns out that in this case, this is actually nothing but zyberg witten curve. So you can derive the result of Zyberg, Zyberg and Witten by mapping into uh, the computation in this local CP1 and CP1 and using the topological string method uh, to identify the mirror curve exactly. Uh, I have uh, uh, zero minutes, so uh, may I have uh, one minute? A little bit, thank you. So, <laughs> so I just wanted to, so Edward, asked me over lunch or dinner, I forgot, why uh, the two-foot coupling has to be flat connection. I'm not sure I'm, not, I'm going to be answering that question in one minute, but I'm going to say something which may be related to that question, which has to do with open string. So remember, in the case of open string, you can consider the sum of a boundary with uh, the, some generating function. If you have actually D brains, and then you can also have type two with D brain, then you have an interpretation of S as low energy uh, super field, which has to do with pro product of uh, gravitino field. Okay, so I don't have time to explain that, but uh, the, this is again, even if we, we have open string, you can interpret it as a part of low energy effective F term. Uh, where S is related to product. So this is sometimes called the group or superfield, uh, but it's basically computing scattering amplitude of gluinos. So then if you have uh, 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 N equal to F term, you can, you can compute using this some F term. For example, for G equal zero, it gives rise to now a super space integral of NI del F I del SI uh, zero. This may be familiar from the talk lecture by Nati Zyberg. So you have a Young Mills kinetic term, and then there is a, uh, there is a uh, effective term that, come, uh, that is related to this uh, low energy effective action. Very often, if you have open string, there is a closed string dual with fluxes associated to it. So you have a flux dual. Okay, so, so then you, you, you go to large N dual and you have a geometry with fluxes in it. And uh, in the original type two string cont uh, description, then you have N equal two super field which is associated to the moduli for that cycle. And then 
there is a term associated to flux. So this is a flux, and this is a, 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 a period associated to the cycle. For example, in the type 2b, this xi is a period integral of holomorphic three form associated to the cycle where the flux is going through. So then you can compute n equal to effective theory uh, 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 using this. Now you have four thetas, but then you integrate. Uh, this is actually one and two, excuse me. So then this actually computation give rise to a term like this. So if you compare both hand side, you recognize that this contribution to the flux is taking, taking form which is very similar to term like that, provided, provided that you make identification that this SI is equal to NI. So this is sort of one piece of evidence. Uh, XI, excuse me. So this is a Tofuft coupling, and this is a corresponding period in the geometry. And the ratio of that would be, uh, 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 yeah, 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 that's why I'm, I, I have minus two minutes, so. <laughs> uh, so, so in particular, yes, thank you. So, so in particular, for example, if you have uh, resolved the conifold again, uh, uh, F0, would be equal to one half of x square log x. Oh, it must have been somewhere up there, but I raised, when I discussed the matrix model, remember f0 was of this type. If you look, up, look back your note, you recognize that. So then if you apply this procedure, you find that uh, n times del f del, del s give rise to uh, n s log s minus two pi i tau of s, and uh, this is nothing but the uh, veneziano Yankierowicz uh, uh, superpotential that appears in the lecture by Nati Zyberg, and this was pointed out again by the director of this institute, Digraph and Buffer. So you see that there will be the topological string computation has lots of uh, a beautiful connection to a variety of physics that were discussed uh, during this summer school. So sounds like this is a good place to start. Thank you, and thank you for uh, extending my time also. Thank you very much for your visit. <laughs>